so excited. Tonight, we are going to light up the spring that is Lion Eater Spring. Lion Eater Spring is located in Suwannee County on the east bank of the Suwannee River, north of the Suwannee River State Park. There are two boat ramps that it makes sense to leave from to get to Lion Eater Spring. One is the boat ramp at the Suwannee River State Park. From here, it is about three miles away and would take about mm, 60 to 80 minutes against current paddling to get to Lion Eater Spring uh, when the river is at normal running levels. The more convenient way to get to Lion Eater Spring is from the boat ramp at Big Oak. It is about a half mile paddle or 10 to 15 minute easy canoe against current. Big Oak boat ramp is accessed by uh, a dirt road in a rural community. Notably, there are no bathrooms here, so pee before you come here. I know you guys don't care about these details, but girls do. I'm telling you, girls care about this stuff. There is notably no road access to this spring, so the only way to get there is by boat. We chose to canoe here. Because it's located on private property, please be respectful of this property if you choose to visit it. The Suwannee River starts at the Okefenokee Swamp and ends in the Gulf of Mexico. That's a distance of 246 miles. God told me not to do this, but how can you stop yourself? I mean, really, ready? Way down upon the Suwannee River, Far, uh, oh, um, far, I don't know how the words go. Well, that's probably enough, um, but you could, you had to do it. You're here, you are on this funny, I mean, I've heard of this river for forever. Okay, so the plan is, is that we're going to canoe from this big oak boat ramp and go up to Lion Eater Spring and wait for dusk. Guy's gonna put on his scuba diving equipment and use his video lights to light up the spring from underneath the water while I'm up on the edge around the spring on the limestone cliff and I'm going to be waving my flashlights back and forth above to light up the trees and then take time-lapse exposures of the spring below. We've done this a couple of times at different springs and I'm telling you the results are like, I don't know, magical, like like little fairies come, have come by and lit up the spring and it's just so much fun because um, it just takes on this otherworldly characteristic that I love. So I can't wait to see what happens. Here are some quick examples of some of the other springs that we've done. This is a really scenic and pristine section of this river. There are homes associated with the Big Oak community, but after that, it's park land on either side of the river, and it's just really gorgeous. And it's particularly beautiful because along this section of the river, the limestone comes down to the water and has been scalloped and curved and waved uh, to make these beautiful formations along the river's edge. And coming from those forms are moss and ferns that just want to add to the prettiness as if they were like, okay, if you're going to make it pretty, I want to put a little extra pretty on it too, so here we come. More than 60 species of fish are found in the Suwannee River Basin. These include simply minnows and suckers and chain pickerel, long nose gar and Florida gar. There is sport fishing that's quite popular here too. They enjoy catching sunfish, bluegill, sunfish, spotted sunfish, warmoth, I slaughter that black crappy, who would want to catch that fish, as well as largemouth bass and Suwannee River bass. While canoeing along the river, it's possible that you could see deer, bobcats, raccoons, or other animals as they come to the water's edge to drink and search for food. You might see beavers and their dams. I was really hoping to see one of these things. While I was researching this area, I realized that the Florida Trail goes by here. It's one of 11 national scenic trails in the United States. It currently runs for a thousand miles with another 300 miles planned. It goes from Big Cypress National Preserve to Fort Pickens at Gulf Islands National Seashore. Um, honey, I, I, 
I want to go here. Can we, our next trip, can we do this? That sounds awesome. As you're paddling along, sometimes the limestone outcroppings recede and you come to sandy beaches. And occasionally on these beaches, you can sneak up to an alligator. We did not see any of these alligators, but I wanted to. I also found out while I was researching this area that there is the Florida Wilderness Trail, which is a canoe and kayak trail that's set up with convenient camping platforms above the river. They provide restrooms and hot showers for paddlers. I think I want to do that too. Honey, can we do this trip? It's always dangerous to have me do research because then I, I mean, one thing leads to the next thing leads to the next thing. I just want to have all this fun. And I just love the shapes of the outcroppings scalped by the river and the holes carved into weaknesses in the limestone. It just makes you want to climb along the cliffs and explore them. They look so fun. Sorry, I, I, I digress. We're here to talk about Lion Eater Spring. Thank you. When we came to Lion Eater Spring, the river was coming down. So um, the river is encroaching fairly close to the spring. Um, we had approximately 20 foot of visibility. The average output of the spring is 92 cubic feet per second. That's about 60 million gallons a day. Typical visibility runs 20 to 40 feet, so it's not super clear, but certainly clear enough to look clear from the surface. Actually, when the Suwannee River is really high, the pressure from the river reverses the flow of the spring and it actually siphons in the tannic water from the river. The spring has a cave system associated with it. It was originally explored by Guy Bryant, <clears throat> who is uh, my boyfriend, and Lee Sams. Yeah, Lee Sams is nice, but notably not my boyfriend. Guy Bryant, <clears throat> my boyfriend, um, named it because when they came up from one of the dives of it laying line in it, Guy said, golly, that spring is really eating up my line. Because you see people when they go into a uh, unexplored cave, they lay the line to know where they've gone and how to find their way out. This spring is still being explored. As of the time we were making this video, there were over 28,000 feet of line laid in this spring system. That's over 5.3 miles of line that's been laid in this cave system. If you want to read more about the history of Line Eater Spring, um, you can read a blog by Guy Bryant, my boyfriend, um, and we'll include a link to it in the show notes. This is a video that Guy Bryant, my boyfriend, took of Marissa Eckhart um, in January 2016. This video is about a thousand feet back into the cave. Once we One, got the lay of the land three. at the spring, we just had to wait till dusk. So, I had this brilliant idea that I was going to jump in the water and Guy said, well, if you're going to oh, jump God. in, you might as well catch One, it, the footage two, of it. So three, jump. You know, sometimes they're not really smart. So I, well, I held the camera on a stick and jumped in the water. This picture is a panoramic iPhone picture taken during the day. This shot is a daylight shot that was taken with our Canon 5D Mark II. It is a 15 second exposure. We took a time lapse of us lighting up the spring for these nighttime photography shots. We're going to intersperse with it our pictures so you can see how they turned out. This is a photo taken at almost dark with a combination of six different photos, 30 second exposures with the Canon 5D Mark II.
this photo is taken when the sky has turned that gorgeous cobalt blue. It is a combination of 16 different photos taken with the Canon. This photo is taken in total darkness. It's a combination of five different photos taken with the Canon. The only problem about canoeing to a place and then taking pictures at almost dark cobalt blue and completely dark is then when you're done, it's, um, well, you know, it's, um, well, it's dark. So we, uh, kind of had to paddle out in the dark, uh, occasionally using a flashlight to kind of see where we are. Where's that boat ramp so we can get back out? We had to load all our gear up and our canoe into the van in the dark and away we went. What a fantastic trip. I'm so glad you came along with us. Stop recording.